Hello, everybody. It's Rhino here with your Disney News Roundup for the week of December 28th, 2020. I hope you all had a great holiday. Um, Here are some of the more interesting news stories that happened in the last week, and it wasn't really a lot, so I apologize. I really don't have that much to talk about. But uh, at Epcot, you might have heard uh, the scuttlebutt was that the walls around the new entrance fountain were finally removed, opening up that entire entire main entrance area. Um, I've been seeing some really fancy photos come out since the reveal, and I think it looks really nice. I love a good prism fountain. Um, I think it both looks like retro and futuristic at the same time, if that makes sense. But um, though I haven't seen it in person just yet, I think from the photos that I have been seeing like flooded through social media is that this fountain is really going to pop at night because it's got these really amazing like multicolored lights that kind of uh, come on around the base of the fountain. And um, I think it's a great addition. I think it really makes that whole area just flow a lot better. And uh, I can't wait to see the continued updates that uh, come to Epcot. Hopefully, um, you know, hopefully we're not just left with buildings falling apart now but um <clears throat> also new manhole covers that's it <laughs> that's all i really have to say about that now while we are at epcot let's talk about the taste of the festival of the arts uh, blah 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 it's like a whole really long title anyway so as you may or may not know disney's taste of festival the holidays is about to come to an end this week uh but fear not like i just said epcot taste of international festival of the arts is just around the corner, and Disney has released the lineup of some of the food studios that are going to be scattered around the World Showcase. So I am going to run through those and some of the highlights of their offering, and there's actually quite a few, too. I thought there was just going to be uh, maybe a limited number this year, but um, I don't know. It seems like they're still doing a pretty pretty good amount. So um, the new studio on the block this year is called Vibrante Vivido, which will be located between the France and Morocco pavilions. It is described as fresh and bright, sweet and savory dishes, as well as smoothies and daiquiris that are going to be found there. Um, You've got Mosaic Canteen. That's going to be located in the Morocco Pavilion. It will celebrate bold flavors, including a harissa roasted rack of lamb and a Mediterranean flatbread with Zartar pesto. At American Adventurers, the artist table, guests will be able to try the chef's steak on beef wellington and pan-seared scallops. Citrus Blossom will return for the festival uh, with the orange bird sipper and the orange cream shake that goes with it back again. Just can't get rid of it. Remember when we lined up and we were so shocked when it was sold out? Who knew it would be here so many, so long, so far down the line here? But uh, it is one of the cutest zippers ever, so I'm not really going to complain about it. I got one downstairs. Um, we're going to have Germany's Cuisine Classique. We'll offer dishes such as a red wine braised short rib, the coco bean, and opera cake. I'm also going to murder the names of anything that is even slightly fancy in here. So we've got uh, Decadent Delights, which is the promenade refreshments area. That is going to have some soft serve ice cream with raspberry and lemon flavors, as well as a bunch of beers. The Deconstructed Dish, which was which has historically been one of my favorite of the booths, is going to be back. That is going to be in Showcase Plaza. That's going to offer, uh, you're going to see the return of the Deconstructed Reuben, BLT, and Strawberry Cheesecake. And there's going to be a breakfast-inspired chai tea shake there as well. Mexico has uh, uh, El Artista uh, Ambriento, which will highlight Mexican-inspired flavors of dishes like pork belly pastor, chili rellenos, and a chocolate taco uh in japan we have goshiki which will offer fan favorites such as sushi donuts and vegetable gyoza ah the sushi donuts so good i really just love a good anything shaped like a donut to be honest with you and donuts those are also delicious um there's a drink there called pink snow which is sake beverage that features sake peach schnapps cranberry juice and calpico uh, festival favorites will offer guest dishes like charcuterie, Remy's ratatouille, the lemon blood orange tart, and a giant chocolate chip cookie. A coffee cocktail and a micro brew will also be featured at that booth. That is going to be in the World Showplace. Um, also in the World Showplace, you're going to see Painter's Palette, which will offer items like steak tartare, salt roasted beet tartare, and a pistachio cake with cherry mousse and morello cherries. Morello? 
I don't know how to say it. Uh, then you have in France, La Art de la Cuisine Française, which will, of course, be all things French, including the return of the warm brie in a bread bowl, as well as black winter truffle croissant and a trio of macarons. French wine and frozen martinis will also be served. In Italy, we have La Art de Manger. I'm I'm just making throat noises at this point. They're going to ser- serve uh, arancini, lobster ravioli, and cream-filled Italian donuts, as well as beer, wine, and cocktails. You've got Masterpiece Kitchen, which is located in the Canada Pavilion, and that's going to feature wild mushroom risotto, a salmon and cream gâteau, and a panna, ca- a panna cotta. My goodness. Uh, wines to go with each dish will also be offered. Uh, China has the Painted Panda, which will showcase items uh, such as a pork and water chestnut meatballs or Szechuan Red Hot Mala Shrimp. Bubble tea, draft beer, and Chinese-inspired cocktails will also be available. You have Pop Eats in the Showcase Plaza that's going to offer the return of the Almond Frangipane Cake and the Pops Art a sugar cookie with strawberry filling that might just be a masterpiece. You've got shrimp ceviche, tomato soup with grilled cheese, which will also be available. Um, And then the funnel cake stand uh, near the America Adventure, which has been offering some really interesting things, is going to be doing a red velvet funnel cake topped with cream cheese icing and some pixie dust. I'm assuming that is powdered sugar. Uh, Refreshment Port is going to offer lobster poutine because they're getting fancy over there. Uh, In addition to traditional poutine, chicken nuggets. What did I say? Fancy, fancy. And beverages. And then obviously the Joffrey's Coffee locations throughout the park are going to offer their various uh, treats, the latte and donut combinations inspired by the festival. So I know that was a lot uh, to listen to and a lot of stumbling and uh, just terrible descriptions. But uh, if you are interested in the taste of Epcot International Festival of the Arts, that is going to take place January 8th through February 22nd, 2021. And honestly, the Festival of the Arts is one of my uh, favorite festivals that they do at Epcot. It, it, I think the food is not only – it's really good, but it's also just always presented in such an interesting way. And I feel like it, it's really worth it. Plus, I love the showcase of the different artists that always come around. And you get to talk to them and, and stuff. So it's neat. So we'll, we'll see. We'll see how it goes this year as a taste of it. But honestly, that sounds like – more almost than was even there the first year. So I, I, I don't even know why they keep just calling it a taste of something. But um, in while we're talking about food, let's talk about the big event that happened this last week, which, uh, well, big for anybody that loves a good cookie, is at Disney Springs, we had a surprise soft opening from Gideon's Bakehouse. If you haven't heard of Gideon's before, it is an Orlando-based, um, just at this point, a legend, I feel like. Um, they make these half-pound cookies that are literally the best thing that you are ever going to have. They've gotten a, a reputation through various like magazines. All this stuff is really being declared as the best cookie in Florida, and I think it's one of the best cookies I've ever had in my life. Best cookies. I have I have been going there since like way back when they, they first opened. Back when you used to be able to show up in the evening and like they'd still have cookies, but then they most days they sell out like really early in the day, which is good for them, you know. Um but they they've gotten just like a reputation that they 100% deserve um they're just it's one of those things that is worth the hype and now you coming here on a disney vacation to walt disney world will be able to get your very own without having to leave property which i think is amazing so it's up and running at disney springs you're going to find it down where erwin pearl used to be that's across from jock lindsay's uh, the hangar bar and then down near the boathouse on that little corner um the the only thing is you can only get six cookies at a time with a limit of two on the special editions now it doesn't sound like a lot but they're half pound cookies honestly it takes me a couple of days to get through one cookie because i like just have a little piece and they're very indulgent i'm not judging you if you eat that whole cookie in one sitting you go right ahead because they have a coffee cake cookie that is exclusive to disney springs now oh my gosh and this thing is like life-changing i think it's only available until like noon or they sell out it's gonna sell out it's so Good. So good. I had it when they offered it at the East End Market location in Winter Park. But uh, each one of these cookies is going to be $6. That sounds like a lot, but it is 100% worth it. That's only a dollar more than the original location, too, which I believe they were just $5 there. So well worth it, honestly. Um, Like I said, they've got the exclusive coffee cake cookie. Um, I keep calling it a cookie coffee cake cookie. I I don't know why. Um, But I've never had a bad cookie there, and uh, I think it's it's totally worth trying. Now that I've hyped you all up and there'll be a line forever there, I have only myself to thanks for this moment, and obviously people 
who are way more important than me that put this news out. So, um, alrighty, uh, before we go, I just have one last thing to say, and that is um, that, like I said, not a lot happened here, but I just want to remind anybody that is coming to property or staying on property this week because it is New Year's that there really isn't much going on in terms of New Year's celebrations because of the pandemic still. Um, so don't expect any parks or Disney Springs to be open uh, past midnight or even up to midnight. So I'm just going to read you the uh, the times for this week on December 31st. Magic Kingdom is open 8 a.m. to 11 p.m. Hollywood Studios is 9 a.m. to 9 p.m. Animal Kingdom is 7 a.m. to 8 p.m. Epcot is 10 a.m. to 10 p.m. And Disney Springs is 10 a.m. to 11 p.m. I know that the resorts are having some in-room celebrations that you can you can pay for, obviously. It's a an upcharge there, and they're streaming some uh, fireworks on the in-room TVs, or if you are at home and not even coming to Disney, but you're missing like the Disney celebration, you can go over to our other YouTube channel, which is youtube.com slash WDW info. And there are a ton of fireworks shows on there. You can watch the 4th of July fireworks. If you want, you can watch Epcot fireworks. You can watch whatever you want to watch. They're always really, really good. Um, Craig does an excellent job with those shows. So if you're looking for some fireworks to go out with, uh, WDW info, youtube.com slash WDW info. I mean, you can go to WDW info.com and you'll find plenty of information about Walt Disney world and anything you need to know about your vacation on there. Um, but that is going to do it for the news this week. Like I said, not a lot happening, not surprising because we're in that middle period between two different, uh, big holidays of the year. So why would a lot be going on this week? Um, I just want to remind all of you that this video and everything that we do here is brought to you by dreams, unlimited travel. They are experts at helping you plan the perfect Disney vacation uh, visit them on the web at dreamsunlimitedtravel.com. If you book with them, it costs you nothing extra on your vacation and you help support the show and uh, everything that we do here. So it is much appreciated. Thank you, everybody, for that. If you enjoyed this video even a little bit, give it a thumbs up. Give it a thumbs up because we want to go out on 2020 with a bunch of thumbs up. So thumbs up, subscribe to the channel. There's plenty of other Disney-related content on this channel and all the other YouTube channels that we have. Uh, so please check those out. Uh, uh, that is going to do it for me this week. I hope you all have a safe and happy New Year's celebration and a very happy 2021. I'll see you later. Bye, everyone. Bye.